Aren't you going to do your opening? Yeah, here I go. Uh, what's up, everyone? Episode 14 of the Anime Podcast. And we watched four anime. It has to do with uh, bear-sized cats, healing powers, generic isekai, and a tiny senpai. And we're going to dive right into it right here. So buckle up, get your popcorn, get your drinks, and get your life-size anime waifu pillow. And come join us as we talk about these episodes. And yeah, let's go. <laughs> Exciting though, we have four four new new anime we watched uh, from the summer list. Yep, from Crunchyroll. These are all Crunchyroll or on Crunchyroll. At least that's where we watched them. Um, Getting it done so we don't fall behind. Well, we're already pretty more. behind. We have a lot. We have a lot. That, Chris, we, we have a lot going on. Life, life's <laughs> yeah. fault. That's, yeah, that's pretty true. Because we're about we're at the corner of fall. So we are, we're, we we're are. Just, well, I hope at least party. you you guys are at least um all caught up with the ones that we did watch, right? Yeah. We only yeah. watched 3 before this, so. Yeah. yeah. But remember we promised in the last one that we last season mm. review this season we're going to make sure we're watching them as we watch them, so I've watched so. It's 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 watch them as nobody knows when they came out. John watches all of them. And then there's that one time we're like, oh, you know, we're going to sit down. We're going to watch ZOM 100 together. Yeah. And what happened? What happened with that? Did you both Zom watch 100, the, so the, good. the entire <laughs> series? And then I'm sitting there waiting patiently. And Wait, then you watched it all already? Chris watched it all 100%. Wow. I only no, I only watch what's released. Okay. So it's not hundred percent. Well, uh, well, so better... I just see it on the account and I see, you know, you know, continue watching and I oh, see Oh really? Because yeah. I've been watching it on Netflix. So have you? Then who's yeah. been watching it on Crunchyroll? Well, I guess one of the unless unless uh, people that use John's. Yeah. Account. <laughs> that's true. I know. Chris just handing it out to people too. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, I said to Zach, he said, do you have Crunchyroll? I said, no, I use John's. Yeah. You can ask him if you can use it. And he was like, yo, Chris said you'd hook me up. And then I was like, well, <laughs> I guess. And then, no, I'm kidding. He was like, oh, he asked. He's like, oh, can I use it? It's fine. Because I think there's like 10 people on it or something at this point. It's a lot. I'm surprised they like, allow uh, not many well. people. Mm. <laughs> Fingers Wait, crossed. John John just changes the password and goes, you all have to regain respect again to, to use this. Look, hopefully I don't have to keep changing the password, Chris, because that's Chris annoying fine. when every single person's like, hey, did you change the password? What's the password? Uh, did you change the password again? I remember the password. It's. Cool. I think. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You have to change it again. <laughs> well, I mean, this isn't live, so there'll just be a nice big beep right there. Yeah. But God damn, Chris. <laughs> Chris, you really did that. You really did that. I I'm... literally doxed your account. <laughs> yeah, it goes from literally All right. 10 Chris people is... jump getting a uh, new Chris login is... email every day. <laughs> yeah, right, literally. <laughs> My bad. But... But I yeah, but, don't know the email. Yeah, let's uh, not give that out. Uh, yeah, I mean, at least we're we're back to a somewhat uh, regular cadence now. Um, this will probably somewhat. be out in a day or so, which will be right around the two week mark of what the last episode was. So nice back to almost being no episodes for two weeks to then two back to back episodes. Yeah, uh, we know back. the fans say they want more. They want more of Team Umai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's why we we've gone ahead. We've watched the four. But uh, let's let's see what what should we jump into? What do we want to talk about the most? What's been eating away? Well, since I think last we, night? we talk about least the favorite ones. to most favorite. Do you want yeah, to do that? Yeah, because I feel like I feel like because we ended we ended on a good note. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. Well then. I guess what's the least favorite for my the both OP of you? skill makes me or my <laughs> unique skill makes me OP even at level one. Yeah. I will agree. I will agree on with Chris on this one because it's just like I don't know. It's just so basic. It's, it's like been, it's been done well, so many times not, and it's like no. I, I couldn't get 
hooked into anything whatsoever. And I was just like, after watching it, I just went, I didn't care what <laughs> happened. I was just yeah. like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I felt I, like I just watched a commercial that for a product I've never needed or <laughs> wanted. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was definitely one of the did, those two were definitely the bottom for me. Did, but did you guys watch just subbed or dubbed? Because I watched all dubbed minus Masterful Cat. Um, that was only in sub. No, I, I watched, watched all English except for Masterful one of them Cat. Was... Masterful I Cat. I only yeah. watched my OP skill dubbed because i fell asleep last night watching it so this morning i was very tired and i woke up and i was like i don't want to read subtitles right now so i had to deal with the yeah the dubbed version i mean i will say that for the great cleric that was i'm pretty sure the voice of uh deku suku midoriya with justin forget his last name is Where are your the sources? I'm, I'm, I should check, I should, but I think that's when I was watching. I was like, this sounds oddly familiar. Uh, we're having John, you know, fact check this on the back end. You know, Chris looks like he's in physical pain. Sitting. Are you just thinking about the show? <laughs> I was trying to remember like memorable moments and mm -hmm. just like nothing stood out that made a lasting impression. So it looks like so. The, voice, the English voice actor for it is just Justin Brenner. Yeah, that too, that's yeah. who plays the English dub of uh, Izuku Midori. Yeah. But this which, is for the Great which Cleric. Which was correct? the same. Yeah. Yes, for the Great Cleric, which was. So I guess we're talking about the Great Cleric then. Yeah, because let's we're, just do we're that. Jumped so much of this. But yeah, it's the same um, voice actor that. It's also the same voice actor from the one, The Legendary Hero is Dead. Yep. He played the main character in that too. Um,. He played that. I thought the hero that died. That's oh. what it was. Oh, I didn't realize Justin Brenner was also in um, Hell's Paradise. He plays one of the um, executioners, I think. Yeah, he does. Yeah. The, bl the blonde haired one that's like obsessed with uh, dissecting bodies. Chris's so, favorite, yeah. uh, favorite anime. And then, oh, I didn't know he was in Black Clover, too. Oh, we're in um, Ranking of Kings. Which you guys still haven't watched. That's one of your favorite. But before we get yes. too off track, the great cleric, I would say that again, it's a it's a story that I feel like they kind of just unraveled quite fast and kind of threw you into it. And again, a isekai that you know you just jump right in. They kind of explain how the main character died, and then very similar, you know, idea to any type of D and D video game type leveling, you know. Yeah anime that would happen that menu yeah. yeah the stat menus things like that yeah it was very uh it was the only interesting thing was the how he died and gets gets reborn into it with Is it like he just gets yes. shot random well i mean it's different than being crushed or by a car. run Most over of the time it's yeah. by a car yeah I guess. yeah Cars are usually the number one death in the isekai. Or just like being an old, like passing away from old age and then reborn or like in a great battle and like died and reborn. Yeah. But it was they like, always die in some weird way, though. Like it's like, always something. Weird. It wasn't like he was dissatisfied in his life. He was like uh, overachieving at work and everything and just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So yeah. it's it wasn't like, oh, I hate my life. Let me I wish something new would happen. He was like, no, I'm going to get a promotion out of this for all mm -hmm. the good work that I did. And then bam, you're shot and yeah. you're reborn again. That's when and, life was going well yeah, just, for him. Exactly. It was all taken away to then start at the bottom and deal with all this otherworldly bullshit. Yeah. You know, for me, I, so, you know, it's an isekai. It has all the similar tropes as any other isekai. So there's not really a lot of originality from this. But what I appreciate is that while, you know, the main character, he has the ability Building. to get S-grade drops from monsters. No, no, no. You're confusing this. <laughs> we... yeah, the great cleric is the healer one. <laughs> oh, wait, that's one. right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought yeah, we were still yeah. talking about sorry. my unique skill. Scratch that. Okay, no. so oh, as yeah. I was saying, what I do appreciate about this is the fact that they don't start him as OP 
and he has to work his way up. And that's yeah. that's what I like. Okay, I don't, I don't, I hate. I'm excuse me, but I I really don't like when isekais have an OP character like right yeah. off the bat. It's just it loses my interest. Mm-hmm. Um, because like, what's what's the point of watching? You know, when I watch anime, how I get drawn into the characters is watching their development. And if you're already OP. The only kind of development you're going to have is like with other characters. And no. a lot of the time that's romance. And I'm not a huge Rome fan or romance yeah. fan. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not romance. sure if there was a, I, I can't tell if there's going to be a big romance or like trying it. Cause I could see who they were trying to do it with, with that um night lady, but mm-hmm. she just, I couldn't tell if like that's even going to bother happening or if that's just like, I mean, he's 15. She seems like a grown adult, so I don't he's know. He's fifteen. He's fifteen in the in the. Oh, yeah, that says what it on his stat card. card. Said, "Oh, see, I didn't pay attention to that." But I mean, what does it matter? It's another world. It's a blah blah blah. Right. So, um, but I mean that that like guild lady was hitting on him, and I don't know how old she is, but oh no, that was the. I don't think no, I don't think that happened in this. I think she was it. No, because it was in the other one. Oh wow! Yes, you're wow. pulling a Chris both... as well. Yeah, wow! Look at was... you guys. Look that, at me! So, Look at me! Right, pull well, this this information out. We'll see. You know. So Ooh. that's that's how Goodness. that's how that's how that's boring how and deep was. and it, well, not even that. Not not so memorable. Let's, let's yeah, not memorable. But let's take out like oh, it's just like saying it's bad or anything because it can. It's I think the real issue here that for both of these, and I think we might as well just talk about both together at this point is yeah. that um, the isekai genre is just become way too boring and yeah. muddied and they all just blur into each other. Like we're, yeah. we're literally here talk confusing one for the other because they're both just they're so, so similar. Bland. Literally before we started recording, Ryan came home and mm-hmm. I was telling him that out of the four we watched, two of them were isekai. And all all the isekai we ever watched just feels like it's the same world, yep. but we're just focusing on different characters. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just a different way of be, telling it. Yeah, That would be a more interesting story. You have like five people who are isekai set up in a different different parts or different different hierarchies inside the world unbeknownst to them they're all like you could have somebody reborn as the demon king some reborn Mm -hmm. as the hero somebody reborn as like the king or like all these different people who are all intricate to the overarching story and have them like interact with each other and like each episode be from their perspective of like oh great he's coming in and like that would be an interesting story to for me to like sit down and watch and season should like yeah, focus something, on the character and then something like at that. the end they all come together in this like seeds planted kind of like heavenly delusion yeah like throughout the season so that'd that be would nice. be cool yeah yeah but that was uh that would be way more interesting but yeah they <sighs> bottom line guy office guy if i'm remembering the correct one yeah, yeah. get They're shot both office guys yeah um Bi- get yeah, shot businessman and office guy after completing a great days of work, great day of work that was going to get him promoted, reborn as a fifteen-year-old uh, villager who decides to take on the role of cleric, goes to the nearest village, makes up a backstory about how his village is so small that he doesn't have any identification, then gets jettisoned forward into being uh, uh, skipping all the steps and like joining the um, whatever the name of the place the is. The healer guild but he has three yeah. choices right he has three choices either like the spartan way yeah. which is to just keep doing the same spell over and over again until you're out of mm. magic replenish it again do it again just rinse and repeat repeatedly yeah. repeat. and that's the one he chose the other two were go to school and get a loan and the other right. one i forget what the third one was but they were just he was like it i'm was not like interested an in apprenticeship these. for the yeah. third that's one. what it was yeah but the apprenticeship they all all those like options it felt very disjointed to me i was like wait what what do you mean there's like three options for like doing this it just felt very it felt at that point like i'm going to this guild and everything from there it should just be a mentorship like it feels like that's stuff you do already out there it seemed very right like out of order of things that they were just like throwing this at him or even giving that as an option Mm -hmm. um because like what he's going to be because he was like just in the room the whole time for the remaining of the episode training. 
Yeah, that, so, like that's what I was getting annoyed at. Mm-hmm. So sure, it shows his development, training his powers, but like it's the repetitive nature mm-hmm. of the spell leveling that was testing my patience. And I'm like, okay, when is it? Like, I would have preferred that he'd done the loan route because he could yeah. go through classes, meet yeah. new characters. So, it seems it seems know. very odd, which then it leads us to like the kind of ending point, which where was the only point for me at least where the story got interesting of like oh now we realize that through this like gang of adventures that are all beat up that who don't want to go to the clerics because apparently they're shady corrupt. and they're like they're corrupt because of their abilities and their higher standings that mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of corruption it's like oh that's a way more interesting story yeah and they charge like a crazy amount of money or something yeah for healing but that's the only time out of the watching this entire episode of the great cleric where i went when he was like i can heal you know Mm -hmm. and just tells him that i was like oh i wonder what's gonna happen but then that was like that it that was it and then i was like "Mm, yeah i don't know it it was it was very it was like a whole episode wasted just to then get to like the plot point of like oh it's not just that i'm a healer it's that i'm going to be the only just healer which at that point it kind of to me was like maybe this maybe his backstory would have made more sense if he was a a doctor or some sort of practitioner in his previous life who had a honorable um magic though it's magic though he just no, has no, to but, just sp- yeah, spell exactly. and heals no, he doesn't have to know that. about how it physically heals someone. I get that no, but, but nothing his sense of like helping out as exactly. a doctor Oh, yeah. okay. I don't think like that translated yeah, pushing, very well. Of, yeah, like pushing his business, his business exactly. Side. Like that doesn't. Which to me, that would make more sense. Of like, I'm going to if he like took the, I guess shadier route and like was one of those people like, oh, I'm going to profit on this and become the most like well sought out like healer and things like that. But we don't get anything. He's like he even says from the beginning, I just want to be a background character that like will heal that's why i didn't pick to be a a whatever powerful right. person yeah he wanted to run support he was saying. exactly but yeah that was uh it was it was very bland that's that's the most i can say yeah. it wasn't terrible it's just bland i i would say like as a, a conclusion thought the show has potential uh, to have like anticip- anticipation of like a cool adventure, mm-hmm. uh, leveling tasks and, you know, character development. But mm-hmm. I feel like for some people, it might be really interesting uh, and promising. But for me, I need more originality mm-hmm. and. I don't yeah. know. It's yeah, just no. like there's just it's. It mm-hmm. feels like something I already watched, you know. I feel yeah. like I feel like if you're into isekai genre, like this might be something you actually genuinely like. Um, mm-hmm. There is potential, like Chris said, for for something as a cool adventure to occur, and you know, maybe once we get more character development from the main character and everybody else, um, maybe it will pick up from there. But I feel like as a group, we're pretty um, overwhelmed with the amount of isekai that come out, and we're mm-hmm. kind of very watered down we we kind of know the stories already no matter exactly. what and it's it's not like something that can fresh hit us you know right yeah, there somebody's gonna have to really so something's gonna have to really different is gonna have to come out and like at this point otherwise all these isekais are gonna be the same and just like be unimpressing at this point because it's just too it, like the art style wasn't overwhelmingly like amazing or anything mm-hmm. great the only thing I can say is, and uh, as we go through and watch this, so we can get when we get to the uh, final season, uh, summer season showdown, um, maybe our opinions will change. Maybe there'll be some great story with uh, that develops with him uh, correcting the overarching um, shadiness of the clerics and the guild of the clerics. But for now, all I have to say this was unoriginal, um, very boring, very tropey uh, mm-hmm. and i'd have to give it like a five or a four yeah i'd give it a four maybe three. I, don't, I don't even want to give it a numeric value i just want to be like <laughs> it's an isekai like i don't think i'm the if best you like to isekai, rate it 
it, yeah. again yeah if we had somebody who liked isekai a lot as the genre and like you yeah. know maybe we, they can give their opinion on it so if you have an opinion on it you know let us mm-hmm. know you know in the comments and everything let well, us know we'll we'll give some quick little opinions on it um from my anime list do, 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 do. this was a out of 8975 reviews uh a 6.5 out of 10 um overwhelmingly do, do, do. let's see for the recommend um uh, not getting the hate it's a guy who works hard per the work ethic of his previous life when he was a salesman it's the only episode the only poor episode and he's off to set up a clinic it's a nice dynamic between him and the broad who trains him the really <laughs> disappointing thing is that they are not referencing more to his previous life skills as the series progress which yeah that's like we're saying it doesn't really line up with what he was which that makes sense but that person yeah. overwhelmingly recommended it um let's see let's read one not recommended because see the see that galaxy liquid to the guy go- Galaxy Liquid, the guy to the left on the poster is holding. Yeah, that shit should be the main character as much as the screen time of the character development has. Uh, that didn't really make much sense. But Yeah, I think yeah, you need to look confused. at the, uh, the, yeah. the, the anime cover art to understand that they one. They probably watched the whole thing as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'll say, like, I think it would be interesting if you know he has this sense of not being corrupt mm. but as the series progresses he does get corrupted i think that yeah. would be uh, a cool yeah storyline to have for this generic isekai. Well, let's let's not hamper on it because yeah. we'll, <laughs> we're we're beating a dead horse here yeah, um, again we again we're not really into the isekai genre right now uh, this may be, if if Ever. if you are into it and you feel it's it's you know, whatever your comment is, let us know because we want to hear others' opinions on no. change on our mind. Who likes it, but yeah. I would change. recommend go watch my OP skill because I thought that was a better isekai. I would but... say bury them both. <laughs> Don't <laughs> but, waste your time. Uh, diving into my unique skill makes me OP even at level one. Um, oh wait, and before we jump off of that one, uh, the studio who produced. Ger- great cleric uh cloud heart studio which was the same one who did the ice blade sorcerer rule, rule the world oh so wow they animated both of them i feel like the animation in uh blade sorcerer was better but they I didn't can't. write the story so i mean it's yeah. not more, like it's more spells more spells and stuff though. i yeah. feel like there's a lot going go watch much go more watch that on. go watch that that was a better a better uh non isekai story by the same studio but all right, my unique skill. So, but this this was the worst for you two, but yeah, uh, second worst for me. So what's what's it about? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> it's about another businessman. Um, I'm pretty sure he died from being overworked. Was he? Oh yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah um, it was an office. He was in the office all yeah. the time doing. Uh, doing like uh unpaid overtime yep. and then he was just eating convenience store drinks and right and snacks yeah. to live the, off of the basically. class this is the more classic trope of like overworked mm-hmm. underappreciated and then died and reborn right um but i i did find it interesting because at the beginning he's just an item drop and he's not even sure like what happened or how he got there until like 10 minutes in and then he's like okay let me tell you my backstory now. Yeah, yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting for that when I was watching. Yeah. This. When are they going to explain? Like, because I got thought thrown I missed into something. It. I rewind back a little bit. Did you? I was I was like, uh, I guess eventually they'll kind of remember or something. So. Yeah. But yeah, he. Um, Chris, you want to continue with your um, synapse? So, yeah, he dies and then he wakes oh. up in a world where everyone, you know, has stats. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, he. Uh, He's like locked at level one, mm-hmm. but he is a, 
able to get S grade item drops from monsters. So yes, he, which clearly nobody has ever heard of an S grade adventurer. Yeah, yeah, they were just yeah. saying F. I think they they were saying they thought F, they thought S was the lowest because <laughs> alphabetically, you know, mm-hmm. it goes that way. And she was like, "Wow, your skills are re- are pretty terrible." And then he was like, "No, video games have taught me otherwise." And then. Now he had to figure it out home. and he he had to put two and two together. He was like trying to figure yeah. it out. And then finally, once he did, once he killed what, one of the slimes mm-hmm. and then uh, he saw his drop, he had to borrow a bamboo uh, spear and it gave him a big pile of bean sprouts that he was excited mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. So and he then, basically, you know, fights these monsters, gets his drops and sells them. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it for the yeah, most the, part. The, the only heartfelt, part of the story i guess is like he lived a very lonely life and he never knew anyone to want him to be home when he came home so when he first meets the i guess first supporting character um i forget their name um emily but emily Emily. but she but emily Mm -hmm. um can only get a few bean sprouts and lives in the dungeon and he hears this and Mm. she offers him like a bean sprout soup or whatever it is and he gets very emotional because he's like, you know, I always mm-hmm. wanted this. I've never had anybody to sh- sit down and like even just share dinner with. And then uh, that makes him now gives him something to work hard for. Because before he wasn't just he was working hard for no reason. Um, and then he's able to help her save up and pay for an apartment because she always wanted one for herself. Yeah. And, uh, and that was the only good, you know, meaningful part there. And then you start noticing as the main character starts developing um his workflow and, and going into the dungeon every single day and getting as many bean sprouts, eventually trying to work uh, their way up to level two, getting those carrots. And then we run into some, some maybe not so nice yeah. adventures <laughs> in the dungeon. And uh, that's when, uh, that's when things kind of took a turn from there. Uh, not to mention, I don't know if you guys remember the appearing dungeon that everyone said that there's no drops that ever come from mm-hmm. anything there. And then he, he tries to square up with a skeleton first and almost yeah. gets destroyed, uh, but then learns how to increase his HP by one by getting a little little seed that only he can pick up. Emily mm-hmm. couldn't pick it up. No one else mm. could pick it up. Um, so he starts, you know, figuring out little things here or there. But for me, it's a it's something that's kind of just been told many times, at least. Yeah, it's another classic trope of I'd say more true to the classic tropes because he's OP. Yeah. He's like, it's a traditional dungeon. He's going to be an adventure and everything from there. Um, I did find it interesting that like his, his, uh, his, the drops that he was getting, it wasn't that he was getting better items, but just larger quantities or physically larger. Like when he gets the carrots at level Mm -hmm. two, I also found it interesting that it was like, yeah, at level one, all the monsters you drop give you bean sprouts and then level two, they give you carrots. And it's like, these are very food themed item drops that they seem to be getting. Um, yeah, I think that's how they get their, their food though. I think for the village and no. they, they trade them. So, but yeah, but yeah, it's again, it's not super rememberable or stand out. If you like right. isekais, <clears throat> you'll probably like it. It's an easy watch is the most I can say. Um, a couple of thoughts I did have uh, was one: Is Emily a dwarf or a child? I, I would... think they're just a small human. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about dwarf or anything like that. I just think that they're short because when they stand next to each other, that's something that you do notice yeah. that like she's much taller short. too. Yeah, that's but why I she, thought she but might the be... hammer, but the hammer, yeah, so heavy. When but that's he also kind of up, why. He's like, oh my gosh. That's also kind of why I was like, is she a dwarf? Because like she has this like clearly higher strength, even though she's at level one. So I didn't know if that was maybe like a a, a trait of her like race and everything. But yeah, I couldn't tell that. But I was thinking like halfway through a more interesting se- like story idea um, that from this would have been to like just revamp the isekais would be he's he's overworked and everything because he, he like does so much and everything for that, but he just keeps end up getting he dying and being isekai. So like every episode could be, he overdoes the work of like, of all this, of like 
mining for uh for bean sprouts and everything that and like does something good for somebody else and ends up dying and then mm-hmm. reborn again somewhere else some different thing like that would have been more interesting to me and it like just keep going and keep going that's yeah. original and then the yeah. and then the god who's reincarnating him goes you know i'm getting real tired of this you know, <laughs> yeah, i'm supposed yeah, yeah. to be teaching you a lesson i feel like if they made an anime about the gods that reincarnate mm. people and how exhausted they are of how many people exactly they that, like, oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. interesting it could be like my my op skill keeps getting me reborn into another world and yeah. just like keeps keeps dying and everything of that because it was i didn't even really think like the title especially for the great cleric too like he's not a great cleric at all not yet, yet. Like, like i feel like these titles too are starting not to fully represent like what we're watching and it's just kind of like we're just following the trope and the the outline or just anything with the words Mm -hmm. my op skill because i know there's tons Mm -hmm. of shows that start with that um immediately it's either yeah they are op or they have to like unlock their op yeah essentially yeah. Um, and, well, that's why know, I liked God in a godless world because I mean I had none of that, and that's why it was. But uh, I had a lot of fan service. Wait, no, I'm I'm I'm, that's why. I, I'm thinking of the Emperor no, King you, is dead. You're right. No, you're right. There's a bunch of pretty there good, too. A pretty good amount of is fan there? service. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, just look at your wall. Don't you have a poster of it? <laughs> no. no, I have a poster of my tiny senpai. Oh, no. understandable. <laughs> Well, we won't waste any more uh, breath on this. Um, yeah, lame ass. My aunt, Excuse uh, me. If everybody wants the uh, again, five four. It's it's same old, same old for me. I can't really give it much. We'll see how it goes on. If it brings anything uh, of interest going forward. Yeah, I'm gonna give guys? it a one. Wow, it's an isekai. I'm not into it. I no. I don't even want to give it a number. Yeah, well, but if you did, what would it be? One through my, five? I don't know. <laughs> my anime list gave it roughly the same rating. It's a 6.28. Um, so people feel the same thing. I feel like I feel like if you brought up all the isekais, they'd probably hang around a six. They're like slowly going down because nothing's as original or interesting. Right. I think in the sphere, like I think really now if you're if you're going to do an isekai like the the closest thing is like you have to top even though i think did we determine if oshinoko was an isekai or just a reborn a diner i reborn? think it, i think we determined reborn. it's just reborn because it's not a different world. okay it's yeah a, it's the same world they're in yeah well i still feel like if you're gonna do something different you have to like top that even though it's not an isekai it's like the most original thing to really occur in yeah. that space of of dying and being a reborn but yeah, yeah. but so uh absolutely what, well what do we want to go up next so i'm guessing my tiny senpai yeah i agree my mm. tiny senpai we should talk about next <laughs> chris do you uh, do you want to start us or should i kind of give a, a rundown yeah I'll, I'll, i mean i'll do it so the first episode you're introduced to the main character who is yeah i don't know his name but he works for a, a company, and I'm pretty sure they're Tama. in. Takuma? What was it? Takuma. Ta- Takuma. Yeah. Pretty sure. Takuma. Senzokai Takuma. I don't remember T- that name at all. T A K U M A. Takuma. Uh, sure. But he works for a company, um, mm-hmm. in in product development, and you're soon to be introduced to his senior which is the tiny senpai um and then it's it's a show that delves into their underlying attraction for each other but neither of them know that they have that attraction so in the first episode there you're going through you know the day-to-day office work and then you know what happens after work they go out to dinner and you're just exploring their you know playful dynamic relationship in a somewhat professional manner because in the office you know there's some weird massage scene she does she does she does repeatedly say she's going to abuse her 
uh, authority, authority yeah. with them. Um, but to, uh, you know, recap that lovely synopsis you gave us, Chris. Um, let's see here on my anime list. My senpai from work is tiny and cute. Uh, Akai is an office worker who is taken care of and coddled by a senior team member, Shiori Katsu. A gorgeous, profoundly kind, loving, and diminutive woman. Uh, Sinzokai certainly hopes that she is not doing it out of duty, but her joy and increasingly, uh, but her joy of doing so increasingly exposes her feelings. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a classic. It's a romance office office romance. Um, I not as good as I think my cool. Um, uh, coworker, I forget what the title, the full yeah, title. The one who, one. the one who has, they're not demigods. I forget what they are, but he they're could like yokai. make it snow and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're the, yokai. Uh, but yeah, it's an office, office romance. They, you can mm-hmm. kind of see like their playful little interactions on right. like, hey, you know, do they like me? Do they, do they not mm-hmm. like me? And you know, the scene where like she says that, uh, you know, I'm kind of jealous of your relationship with your your friend that you grew up with. And then he was like yeah. totally thrown off about that, like little things here and there, which I mean, mm-hmm. you know, was was adorable for this this type of uh, this type it's, of anime uh, for romance. And office it's also love. it's also one of those um, twin series because there was another one that came out, I think, fall of last year called My Annoying Senpai or Annoying My Senpai, something like that, which is. The same thing. It's an office romance between a male and a female coworker, and the female coworker is very tiny. Except she's the new incoming working person, so I don't know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> who's uh was uh found and flipped and produced first. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's the the trend here that I can say at least for this week's watching is that nothing's very original. It's just yeah. a new retelling of the same old tropes, right. the same this, old, same old. And this was easier for me to watch than the two isekais, you know? I was yeah. like, uh, the animation too, This it was just like an upgrade, I feel like. Mm. So, but it's yeah. just a different studio doing it, and I feel like mm-hmm. you could really tell mm-hmm. that in these, this one and the next one we're well, going to talk about. I do agree with that. Um, it might have been uh, easier to watch, because uh, the studio that this, this was Project uh was project number nine which also did one of uh oh, our favorites that we did from the spring season they did um, tomo chan no oh. um the angel next door spoils oh. me rotten so, i feel like that had yeah. better animation <laughs> it did but i feel like that's why it's an improvement here is because like it's a it's a studio that's done better one that i really think uh, another one they did, which was has great animation um, and great uh, production value that you should both watch, I think I've mentioned, is Love After World Domination. Highly recommend that one if you want to watch a good series that's romance uh, and kind of an office space one. Um, in a sense, I would say go watch Love After World Domination by the same studio and a much a much better watch uh, time for it. But yeah, this one, it was good. It was fine. It was a basic well slice of life romance for me. I would say like episode one really focused on just the two characters, mm-hmm. um, the worker and the senpai. But it it did that because you need to get a sense of their like will they won't they be together dynamic mm-hmm. before diving into the other characters to like pull you in. No, and because of that, like. I'm not a huge romance fan, but I need to see how those two characters interact with Mm -hmm. other characters before I have a more definitive opinion of the, you know, series overall. There's just not much to judge off of that because, like, sure, that has, like, okay animation, and it's not, you know, hard to get through. I enjoyed watching it, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's definitely not enough for me to really judge it i think yeah i agree with that i think it'll be better what i've been mm. just last thought on it (laughs) like for the whole year in total there's been stronger romance like my love story like that was that was i'm not i was definitely that was good 
I was definitely thinking about it in this. I was like, that's definitely a better romance for here. Um, this felt very much more on the goofier side, but like it was still okay, but it wasn't like it didn't catch me in or it wasn't doing anything that was like overly unique yet. That like yeah, really quirky, would man. Like it's like mm-hmm. a quirky, you know, right? Yeah, but office type what feel. I, what I've kind of like been finding at least from watching these three that we've talked about so far is as I was, as I've been watching these, uh, I guess because they've been so like generic and redone and everything. Um, another better plot line story for me for would have been is I was thinking, what if we get a, uh, a series? Cause they've, there is a series out. It's not an anime, but there is a manga of, you know, the, the company it's about, um, the people who drive the the isekai trucks and like their duty to like hit people and send them <laughs> to other worlds and like that they literally have a task board and stuff like that so like they they explain like it's it's like one genre yeah well <laughs> well it's 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 more so like the idea of like oh this is the reasoning behind all like why this genre exists and why there's so many of them because there's an organization out there sending heroes to these worlds that like need them I was like thinking of this, you know, there's so many office romance one that what if there's just a series about the HR department and it's their secret job to like hire people and pair them up and they're secretly or they're secret cupids. Yeah. Like essentially say, yeah, they're going to be like Cupid. Yeah. Like that to me would be an interesting story of being like, oh, okay. that should we be starting our own team in my studio now? Is this, I mean, is, is this what's next for us? I, I mean, maybe Chris, we get I know you can draw stick figures. We might be able to do this. I think we yes. could. Yeah. Sai and I will do all the voices since you hate voice actors. Um, and you can just <laughs> you can just animate it. But yeah. no, yeah, I think that would have been an, been an interesting story that I don't think has been done of like maybe show like like God and his cupids and being like, but we found it as time would go on to be too hard to like shoot people with arrows. So we took the more corporate approach and like they run the HR of all the businesses and they're pairing people they're transitioning up. to electric vehicles after this. <laughs> yeah, so th- I feel like that would have been interesting uh, to see, but I, it was good. Um, I think. If you're going to watch a romance, go watch My Love Story. Or if you want something by the same studio, uh, Love After World Domination is a, is a better watch for right now. But we'll see what how it goes with time goes on. Sure. I'll give this a five. I'll give it a six. I, I enjoyed it. Say at six. Least. Yeah, six um, easy to watch for me. Um, yeah. I wasn't too bored. You know, I enjoyed watching it while I was uh, mm-hmm. sitting there. So. Yeah. Uh, my anime list gave it a 6.67 so i mean technically we're falling right in line with those uh had we actually started correctly with my op skill that was the lowest rated even for my am- anime list we would have been falling right along in it um but yeah uh, it's all right um but i guess that brings us to the worst of the worst my- the masterful what was it what was the it the masterful called? cat is depressed again today oh. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Master. Yep. You know, when I, this was the first one I watched. Um, I didn't read the description, so I was just going into it. And opening shot after the OP, I was like, wow, this is really strong. This is starting mm-hmm. off strong, and I hope it yeah. continues that way. And then it's, you know, it's still good, but there are some questionable scenes. Like, mm. there's some CG scenes. Well, and yeah, like mixed weird in. camera angles. So the car, like the Audi, I'll, the Audi I'll, ju- I'll jump into this because this might um, clear those up because I had the same exact opinion as both of you. I was like, wow, they're going really over the top here. There's like so much CGI. It feels like I'm watching camera some angles. some movie that has all these different camera angles going on that they're trying to like produce this very big like shot. It's not that it's bad, but it's like this is a lot to be it's throwing unnecessary. out. For like a first episode, you're really trying yeah. to make a big point. Well, to my surprise, when which wasn't, I guess, a surprise afterwards, I was like, oh, that makes actually a lot of sense. The studio who produced this is Production Go Hands. 
And I know you guys probably have no idea or any reference point to what uh, I remember seeing about, it at the end and saying production go hands, but yes. I didn't look up any other ones that we'd have watched with it. Well, the uh, the one that we did watch uh, actually, and they have a quite a big uh, selection um, of ones that they've done, uh, but one that we all three of us know is to do. Let me pull it up so I don't botch the uh, name. The girl I like forgot her glasses. Oh, They're the wow. same studio that, that makes does. sense you know, because the does. camera swooping in in the classroom exactly. going by the All low those, shots in the office. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I went. I was like, wow, these are yeah. these are really weird choices. Like That's all these so low angle wide shots that I'm like that keep like spinning up. And then I looked up like, oh, the same exact studio, which also explains the coloring because like it's a very weird like matte color tone with like high contrast i was like i thought i felt like i was watching psychopaths for like the i'd say the, the color coloring space. makes it feel lively though for this yeah, yeah it makes it vivid I know, it felt very vibrant yeah it's hard but, though because they're like so when they're at home i feel like it's easier and it, it pops way more yeah. but when the office like how do they bring the office space to life more you know yeah mm. but yeah so they're the ones who did the production of this it clearly shows like that studio right bleed straight through in it with their production um it definitely was it's memorable but with all that a, said you know it's mm. still very good quality animation throughout yeah. the the episode like mm-hmm. there's not a lot of these weird angles and cg scenes it's far and few between um so you know that might deter some people right off the bat but yeah, i was pleasantly surprised watching this uh, mm-hmm. very funny and you know if if uh, i would recommend do not watch the show while you're hungry because they all the food looks so good and i was so hungry when i started watching it and mm. i just wanted to eat so yeah. make sure you have at least a snack or you you eat <laughs> because it's going to make you uh, feel some mouth watering sensations one one do we com- have the do we have the mm. synopsis too as well i don't think we even talk, spoke about yeah, the story yeah, we're yet gonna, we're going to get to that yeah um, but uh, let me see. I feel like the Crunchyroll synopsis is better for it. And if you uh, if you're a cat owner, it's gonna feel very relatable. I will say maybe that's why I didn't feel <laughs> related. Update password. All right, so I'll give my synopsis. I have it up. I have it up right oh, now. Then why did, weren't you saying it? I don't know. You were yes, looking I... it up. I didn't want to ruin it. Yeah, so it you says, could have said, "Oh, I have okay." It. Here we go. Here we go. Ready. Saku is your typical workaholic who happens to take a stray black kitten, Yukichi. But when Yukichi started growing, it seems like he would never stop. Now he's the size of a bear and takes pride in his culinary skills and domestic chores. With a cat like that, it's hard to tell who's looking after who. Regardless, they share a special bond that's both amusing and heartwarming. Mm -hmm. So... And this, that's what threw me off at first. But I, I did see online and, you know, on Crunchyroll and everything, you know, the clips, the posters of this. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. I was like, you know, the cat's taking care of the human, vice versa. Like, Chris yeah. and I have cats. So, like, you know, we take care of our cats and stuff. But just thinking about, like, somebody made a story. Like, I wonder if my cat would take care of me. Like, how would that look? I come home from work and stuff like that. And there was a lot of little funny moments that I enjoyed with this one. Right. It is. So, I, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, this is not as a cat owner, but I did read a, a bunch of the chapter stories when we saw this was coming out. Um, and yeah, it's very whimsical. It's very funny. Um, there's one, the one thing I I'd say is the most thing that I have an issue with is the title doesn't make very much sense to me because at no point in the story that I've read so far, or even the series, I would say the cat's not depressed. If anything, the owner seems more depressed and it would be better of the uh, masterful cat's owner is depressed again or something. And like, yeah, he, I, I just he doesn't he seems disappointed, if anything, throughout yeah, the episode. I could get or annoyed disappointment. The masterful cat's annoyed I would say today. depressed comes later. Yeah, because um, yeah, I think also like to add to it is like you notice that and I thought this when uh, 
our main character w- was going to work. I was like, I don't want to go to work. No, I'm, I'm so mm-hmm. sad. I have meetings all the time. And then the cat just like spins around, like pushes her out the door and yeah, locks, it. locks like, it. Go to work. <laughs> so like, this is a slice of life with a touch of fantasy. Mm-hmm. And with slice of life, I'm off often like cautious. Um, and especially like with the, a bear sized cat, wearing an apron i'm thinking wow this cat's gonna like talk Mm -hmm. to people like speak to them and it's gonna be really weird but despite you know the domestic chores and the cooking skills what i really enjoyed about it was it's just a cat it's a cat at heart it has cat mannerisms and Mm. doesn't speak like it has an inner dialogue yes but it's not a, a fleshed out dialogue. It's like a few words. Yeah. So mm. I've a lot of body really language, that. a lot yeah. of body language from from the cat. And I think this biggest scene in the first episode with this that really speaks the truth for that is when uh, the cat makes those desserts for the coworker, <laughs> and then the co or because the coworker gave them an old like cat like. I don't, what's it called like a little like basket for it to sleep in or whatever a bed. Yeah. and it doesn't fit and you can see the cat trying to get into it and then eventually just wears it as a helmet and like lays mm-hmm. down in bed with it it's like she's like well i guess he likes his bed yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's funny yeah yeah it's definitely funny like they could have went over the <laughs> over the fantasy side and been like he turns into a human or like he has more human aspects of like talking and things like that it's more of like yeah, it's like your pet is if they were your size and they could like open doors and use household appliances, but they're still going to be a pet at the end of the day. Like when he goes and wakes her up and lays on her whole body uh, and she's like, get off of me. I can't breathe. Um, but it is it is funny, um, especially too when he like dresses uh up and puts on like the the whole cleaning suit to like clean the bathroom um in the in the manga later which i'm it's it's one of those things of like well what are the i'm not sure 100 percent of the rules but like later he like he does go about in the city to do tasks but there are points where she's trying to like hide him from her co-workers but it's like but it's okay for the rest of the world to know right. that you have the cat and it's that he's yeah. like this big. So I was like, and you catch, you catch at the end though. Remember with her, I guess her chief worker or boss or whatever. Yeah. It's like, Oh yeah. I've, I've met you before. Yeah. And she's like, wait, yeah. what? Like when? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like am interested neighbor, to see. They're probably that. neighbors or something and they don't even know it. Right. Because well, no, the other they're... thing is they're saying that she'll never get a husband or get married yeah. because of, having well, a cat it's it's they're not neighbors i can let you know that now it's uh Spoiler, it's just, wow yeah um well i don't know they could change it but it's uh it's something very basic it's it's interesting but but like then you have like her actual neighbor the older lady who's like literally walking and he's carrying her trash for him she's like oh thank you you know you've become such a big boy you, you really take good care of everybody and it's just like whoa <laughs> clearly she's okay scares with it. the birds away well, she yeah. was there when when she brought her home. Yeah, but um, like the fact she brought him home, is yeah. now. Yeah, and like also later. Um, but yeah, I mean it's funny. I wish it was a uh, uh, a little more animated, whimsically. I feel like it's for as a as a, as a whimsical of a story it is. It just needs a little more vibrancy. Um, these are like my last thoughts on it. Mm. So there's like tons of stuff that I could say where I, I really enjoyed. Um, but I want to talk about like, I think her name's Sak- Saku. Sak- yes. Yeah. So her character is like a tad one dimensional mm. and like the cat really carried the show for me. Uh, and I don't really know a lot about her job, but we do get introduced to her coworkers a little bit. So there's some dynamic there, but it's just not like very gripping to be yeah. in her work world. Um, so if you knew exactly the name of the company, what they're doing, what their deadline is, you know, what her salary is, all those things would make I it need more to know interesting. All of it, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says I, I do like I do like though. It kept saying just like, oh, we need to get this for company A for company C. Yeah. 
The yeah. best part, my favorite part though, was when well, the cat the cat called her at work, yeah. and she was uh, disappointed because she couldn't come home, so she just clicked over the phone. Uh, her cat, he clicked, and she started like speed typing to try to get the work done faster. That was that she's was evolving. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris, light. <laughs> thought maybe the reason why they don't show much detail of the office is because it might be from his perspective, and he doesn't necessarily know Ooh. or care like what that is and it's, that's why it's just like company this and job this and sure, project sure. this. Yeah, that would make sense mm -hmm. but i'm just saying you know based off first episode <laughs> you know we don't we just don't know what it's going to evolve right. into so well you heard it here chris prefers that this was just a office space series you know nick's the cat we don't need it give me more <laughs> of her work details flush it out yeah I want to know, make it a slice of life about like what she does at work. And yeah, I just do have questions like, what is this going to evolve into? Why is she trying to keep him a secret? If I had this cat, mm. I'd be like, yo, check out my bear sized cat. He can make well, yeah. food. Well, that's the thing I, I'm not sure of is like, is there, in the, in the manga, I don't think there's anything to, there's no stipulation of like, oh, they're going to take away the cat or like, they're going to something's going to happen with the cat or like people are going to be scared of the cat because he goes out and people aren't scared of the cat. So it's just like. What? Yeah, like what in the local neighborhood. Yeah, there's I, nothing I that's she, really hiding. I think or anything. she's the only reason why she, I think, wants to hide it is because of the comment from her coworker about not being able to like, have a marriage or like get married because mm, like sure. what partner what partner would want, sure. you know, a cat like this or something. So that's the only time mm. I would think. I would yeah. love that. <laughs> well, the masterful cat. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I know it loves all the toys and treats you give it. <laughs> More or less. But yeah, the masterful cat, I would say uh, the the best out of the four we watched uh, this time around. This Agreed. this week's was not very entertaining. Uh, I feel like we even, even though this, we watched them all um, pretty last minute, it still wasn't much or, or much yeah. gift giving no. that like of enjoyment or like surprise Enjoy the or, master for cat though i'd say yeah. anything that yeah, was that just was good funny watch. approachable wholesome mm. good animation for the most part yeah. well, and we'll see if relatable. any of them any of them change or get better um for the summer showdown that hopefully we'll be on track for everybody yep. keeps track of now there's seven to watch and maintain so you're not scrambling at the end to watch them yeah, we know i thought side. we were i thought we were gonna watch the the only ones that we enjoyed and not pick 20 to to fully watch no through. we were gonna we were gonna what we talked about last time was is that we're gonna do the whole season so we can do a whole breakdown and see if they changed or got better so mm. you gotta you gotta make sure you're keeping up to date up to date mm. at least watch half of the series so you have more to go well, off of. Chris also watched the, the rest of future series that we haven't watched mm, yet. It's yeah. okay though. Well, maybe next week we'll do the uh, we'll do the um, I don't know if we should do it next week or save it for the end so we can just move along with the other ones or just stack it in. If we should still do with um, the Netflix or, live action. Yes, well, with the Netflix, which we could do that. Tell us what we'll you guys do think. That. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think we should still do that as its own episode and compare okay. the two. Yeah, because yeah. we'll I, I still didn't watch a live action. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a movie. I thought it was a show. It's a yeah, movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, yeah so, so we can do that. Um, episodes yeah. to come, you know. Yeah, episodes to come. This will be out on time <sighs> um, since I'm back in the, the flow of things. And we'll also have our bonus episode of our interview with a voice actor, our very first interview coming soon. Um, and Chris will edit together the interviews that he made me upload and hasn't done anything with. Um, so then we can respond back to uh, Otakon's press thing so we can get our free press, press badges for next year um, out on time um, and not last minute again. Um, so yeah, more to come. Follow, like, subscribe. Um, yeah. Any, yeah. Any, any last thoughts? Any last information? Yeah, I just want to say... You know, I enjoy watching these anime, and mm -hmm. I enjoy talking about them. And subscribe. Um, <laughs> I just want to 
give a big thanks to both of you guys and the people that listen. Yeah. Because it is it is fun, but yeah. if I have to watch this many isekais again, uh yeah, I'm not gonna be too happy with that. I that th- they don't look like isekais off the off the poster. I was really thinking that they were going to be just regular already set in the world. Yeah. But yeah, they, they got You're asking never, for never. too much. You're asking uh, for too much. But yeah. Um episode fourteen. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment. 